we're talking about language and there's this uh 18 year old woman she's making a video of herself we are going to uh listen to a little bit i'll stop i'll uh, speak to it a little bit but ultimately uh, this is a question of what story do you want this white woman this young white woman to live her life in do you want her to live her life inside the anti-white narrative do you want her speaking with the language of white oppression this white negative language or do you want her to live her life in our story where at the beginning here she says she's a queen where in our story, she actually is. She's a hero in our story. In our story, she is she is beautiful. In our story, she is the hero. She will be able to comport herself as the hero in her conversations, of which she will have many. Or do you want her life ruined? That's the question I put to all of these people who want to stay trapped in the anti-white narrative. Everybody who's lurching that direction now. Someone explain to me what's wrong with white pride because I'm so proud to be white. Let me just stop it right there. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everybody if you can hear me okay while I have this video up on the screen now. I want to see if my audio works. I've never I've never used this before. Um but this feature before on this platform Okay, thank you, Jesse Link and Andre and you're Yankee. All right. And uh, Brand says the audio is okay. You can hear her okay as well as, as me. Listen to what, what she starts off with. She's already headed down a bad path. Why is she headed down a bad path? Why? Because there are so many people out there who continue using the language of white oppression. And it matters what language you use. It is infinitely important. How are how are the people around her, strangers, new friends, potential boyfriends, maybe the guy who would have ended up being her husband and father of her children, how are they going to receive white pride? Have they heard that somewhere? Haven't they heard it and read it in books and that the regime has produced in television show after television show and movie after movie? And what does it mean? Is it this attractive uh, young woman who just cares about our people? She's at that point now that we've talked about before, ladies and gentlemen, where all of you, all of us have been. When we first get started, it is this truly heroic, beautiful moment in our lives. When we say the world is against our people, the world is destroying Western civilization and, and Western kind. I have to do something. I'll sacrifice myself. That's the point that this young woman is at. Where do you want her to go? What language do you want her using? I can tell you right now that there's only one route that is going to protect her and make her look like the good guy. I mean, what's wrong with white pride? Because I'm so proud to be white. Like, I am a white queen. I am a goddess. Look at these freckles. Look at this complexion. All right. Je ne sais quoi. She is... This is a wonderful young woman who is sick and tired of what she has grown up with, 18 years old, 18 years of her life, everywhere she's looked. And I want you to see past the bravado. I want you to see past the, the shell that she's putting up to protect her emotions. Because that's exactly what she's doing. She is beautiful. Her freckles are beautiful. Her complexion is beautiful. But that's immaterial. She only feels like she has to say it because she's been told that everyone else, all the non-white races are beautiful. What does that mean? Everybody can conclude that if all of these other races are beautiful and there's one race you can't say is beautiful, then that race is ugly. She is defending herself. 
have why are there so few people out there who can see the truth through the bravado, through the bluff, through the fog of war? Why are there so few willing to listen to the truth? What would ant gnats, what would some of these clubs who want to, they want to, they make banners that look just like World War II banners. What would they like for this young lady? Does that not piss you off all to hell? They'd like to see her dressed up in some ugly costume with some flag on the wall that represents the purest of evil to the world. Maybe not to you because you've done some, some reading. You're apodictic and you've done some reading. And so now you have this apodictic position. But to the rest of the world, it means pure evil. These, these groups of, of men, of boys rather, of males, of boys, they'd like to see her with some hideous banner behind her, dressed up in some sort of costume, saying the ugliest things possible. And then they're going to give her a bunch of attention. And she's going to think that she's doing something. And she'll definitely be doing something. She'll be ruining her life. So let's take a step back for a moment because I, it's going to be easy to get ahead of myself. This girl has endured 18 years of psychological torture. It's called anti-whiteism. She doesn't know the way out. She's trapped in the story of her victimizer. She's concluded that she's ugly because everyone else is beautiful, that she's evil because everyone else is good, that she's talentless because all of the other races have the talent. That's the only conclusion that's left. She's learned on top of logical deductions that the anti-whites give us that her people are evil that she carries an evil seed inside of her, that she needs to make amends, that she needs to surrender herself, that she needs to white flight into drug and drink and tattoos marring her flesh. This is abuse. This is a young woman if you don't look at this young woman and feel her pain and, and not want to wrap your arms around her and tell her that these people were awful, that everything they said was lies. If you don't feel that that's what she needs, then there's something wrong with you. This is what this young woman needs. She has been abused for 18 years of her life. And now she's so sick of it, she's now decided to make this stand, to, to create a video where she's going to say, what's the problem with, and she doesn't know any other verbiage to use. So she's saying white pride. What's the problem? Why can't I love myself? Why can't I love my people? Why can't I have pride about in myself? Why can't I have pride in my people? She's making, she's coming to the conclusion that something needs to be done for our people. You're seeing it happen. These, this is, these are the incipient moments that you all went through. If, if God had only enabled somebody like you or me to be there for you, to be there for her, instead of her landing on YouTube channels are now increasingly Odyssey channels and these people getting kicked from one place to the next. And they think that, well, there, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. They just, they're just going to have to leapfrog for the rest of their existence. Instead, she's ending up, she's going to end up at those places. So what you're seeing right there in this, in this beautiful face of this young white woman, having to say that she's a queen 
that look at her complexion, that it's beautiful. What you're seeing is pain. I'm loving it. I'm not hating anyone else because they're not white. I love your pigment too. So there you have the disclaimer. And because she's inside the anti-white narrative, and this is typical of patriots, conservatives, Republicans, is the disclaimer. I love, I love myself. Oh, but don't, don't think that I'm evil just because I love, because I know that instantly I go in the anti-white narrative, I go into the evil category. So do you see what she just revealed? A lifetime of training that caring for white people is evil. She would not have to give a disclaimer if she had not been trained that caring about white people, that loving her own kind, that loving herself is evil. She would not have to be, give a disclaimer if she hadn't been taught that it is evil to love yourself if you're white, that it is immoral to care about white people, even white babies. This is victimization. My God, don't let me be the only one that can see it. My God, let's let people get to her with go free so that she can truly love herself so that she doesn't get down this bad path that ruins everything. How many of you right now, you don't, don't speak up. You don't have to speak up, but how many of you right now who are listening live or in replay wrecked your lives with that Bravo Sierra that you were given a lot. Some of you got lucky. And you didn't wreck your life. Or maybe your life was already so miserable there wasn't any wrecking to do to it. But don't you dare then say, because you wrecked your life, well, then who cares what happens to her? Or who cares what happens to the, uh, the, white, the white girl who is half this attractive? Or the white young man who is built like a basketball? Don't you dare. Instead, get righteously indignant about what these dirtbags in these white sympathetic spheres are going to try to do to her, what they've done to other women. And then you want me to say, well, there are all these other methods. You know what? You know, all these other methods, all these other ways that are successful. You know, if she'll just say some really ugly things, you know, that might be that might be another option, right? That might be a path. How about some really hideous cartoons? What if she shares some of that? Is that another path for her too? How about if she goes to a, a place where they are, they're ho holding some sort of conservative event and she gets up there and she asks some sort of really edgy question uh, that ruins her for life. And then the anti-whites find out where she lives or they just threaten to, that, to know where she lives and they contact her and she can't live a day of her life without fear. And then to make amends, she thinks, well, I don't want to be stalked for the rest of my life. I don't want my house to get burnt down. I don't want the children I eventually have to be murdered. So to, to make up for it, then she's going to go out and get herself a non-white boyfriend. See, everything's changed now. These are real lives that these others who want to talk, who want to slander me and misrepresent me and misrepresent going free, these are the lives that they want to see ruined. So there was the disclaimer. But I'm proud of mine. I'm proud. I'm proud of the white people. There you have it. Purest love and innocence. Purest love and innocence and a recognition of what's happening to Western kind and Western civilization. This is the moment that I talk about so often for all of us. This happened for all of us. And then regrettably, you didn't have going free. I have no idea who this 18-year-old woman is. I don't know where she is. I wrote, somebody's got to find, uh, find out who she is and, and, and who knows her and can get her go free, get the family, uh, her family of origin go free. So then when she goes to make the family of her creation with the husband she chooses and the children 
that they bring forth in love, in love, they're both going free. That is going to be the, a heartbeat of the recapture of our destiny. And something's wrong with that. But nothing's wrong with being proud if you're black. So there she's pointing out, there's something wrong with that. Do you hear the white negative language? She just said what's happening in her subconscious mind. There is something wrong with caring about white people. There is something wrong with having pride. And when she's saying the word pride, she's talking about concern, care, sucker of Western kind. That's what she's took as Western kind is being victimized. How much pride are you going to have in a, in a, you got to look back at our accomplishments to have pride in the things we've done. She's not, she's not being not just simply motivated by why can't I be happy that uh, Newton did this or that? No. She's talking about the victimization of our people. She said there's there is something wrong with that. Now, why would she talk that way? Why would you talk that way? Because you were in their story. You are a flatlander. That's all you can see but you are going free. You're not going to talk that way because you are going free. And Lord willing, this young woman will go free and she won't talk that way anymore. And now don't bother me with this. Oh, well, she's just trying to make a point. No, that's all Bravo Sierra. That's all Bravo Sierra. I've dealt with it for decades now. You're not pushing anything past me. She is saying the audio that is circulating in her head that there's something wrong with caring about Western kind. And then she's pointing out, but there's nothing wrong because that's the audio circulating that she's been taught with caring about the non-white races. She specifically picks the black race, but she knows that it holds true for the non-white races. And you can be proud of your ancestors. You can say, I love black people. You can say black people are the best. You can say, I hate white people. So she started pointing out there the dichotomy that every white child notices as they, as they grow up. She's become an adult at 18 now. They grow up and they see exactly what I, exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of her clip, that the non-white children, all the children are, are taught, white and non-white, that non-white, everybody's equal, but non-whites are better. Everyone's equal, but non-whites are special. They have to get preferential treatment and special privileges. Well, if someone is special, the only way to have a special is for there to be a group that is not special. Non-white people are the special ones. The group that's not special are Western kind, is Western kind. So she has internalized that. It's her world. The anti-white narrative is her existence. I have been looking at this for decades and I, I, I will continue preaching it even if we get down to one person listening to me because they all want to go the direction of the uh, speaking only with the words that the anti-whites allow them to speak with and think that they're doing something. And ruining as many lives as they possibly can. Because they would love to get to this girl and start talking about what? You need to start talking about the Marxists and the Bolsheviks and the communists. And you got to talk about the people who are behind those deaths. You have to name those people. And then what happens for this woman? She is in intense pain. And then she points out that in this dichotomy, that you are allowed to hate white people. What is she saying when she said, you can say, quote, I hate, and, and then I'm, I got to be careful for the ear against the door. You know how the AI is, but white people. She is saying that society is allowed to say that it hates me, talking about herself. If that doesn't break your heart, you don't have one. Do you have children? That's what they're saying in their heads. Society is allowed to hate me. Her people 
is who she is. She can't escape it. This is the glorious angelic direction. The other direction white people go is to become anti-white. So you could just as easily find a video of a young white woman, 18 years of age, talking about how evil the white race is and holding up her phone to show you the picture of her latest non-white boyfriend or whatever it is, or girlfriend or whatever it is. You could just as easily find that video. She's saying society is allowed to say that they hate me. They hate the people I care about. They hate the people that I love. If society is allowed to say that they hate the people that I care about and love, that means that those people have been, and she can't put it into words this way, but dehumanized. And if they've been dehumanized and I've been dehumanized, it means I can be physically harmed. The harm that is the, the victimization of me and my people I care about and the totality of my people is moral. That's what she is grappling with as she's saying these things. Do you really think now when you see me get so animated and so worked up that it's not deserving at this point? Do you really think I should be more patient with the people who would love to get at this girl and you know they're trying right now? You know they're trying right now and you know they're going to be sending her messages uh, with, uh, it doesn't matter whether they're coming from some nitwittery who says that they care about America first or some other nitwittery who says they you want to put up the equivalent of some sort of twisted cross or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. They're, they're all going to get to her and say, well, it's this other group of people out there. That's the whole problem. You just get rid of them. And then everything's just fine as though focus as though as though saying get rid of a group of people is moral. As though that's acceptable. As though that's going to help her at all. You shot your life down the toilet with that talk. And then you're going to allow these idiots to do this to her. And all the ones like her. Now you see why I have so little patience for adults. For people who are supposed to be grown ass men, women uh, out there who, who want to joke around with the most hideous jokes and hold the most revolting positions. Because I know that it's going to be ruining lives. I've seen it happen too many times. And it's okay. But to have white pride, to display white pride on social media, in today's world, you can't. So explain to me what's wrong with white pride. Well, honey, everything is wrong with that phrase white pride. Everyone you know is going to hear what you have to say there, and they're going to think that you're a monster. You've got to go free. You've got to be talking about white positivity. You've got to be a advocate for white well-being, a practice. You are only this, a Westman, man, woman, and child of Western kind, a single people with many countries, many different hues on our beautiful culture and civilization. That's what you are. You are also a patriot of what obviously is the United States. And then what you do is a practice, which is going free, service to white well-being. You treat those mean pathogens that they have sown into you to destroy you. You do not fall for their story about what it's supposed to look like when you oppose them. Because when you go out into the world behaving that way, all good people will turn away from you. You will lose everything that matters. You will burn your reputation. You won't be able to get a good job. You'll end up white flighting into ugly endeavors, ugly decisions. For what? You won't do yourself any good. You won't do a future family that, that you could make. You won't even have a, a loving, beautiful future family. None of those people have loving, beautiful families. 
and I want the best for you. So please, if you see this, go free. I will pay for your copy of all of my books. Tell your mother and father, uh, because at 18, you're almost assuredly still living at home, that I will send them uh, whatever they, if they want the books sent to them, I will send the books to them. They can look at them first, whatever it is. But it's on me and for everyone else out there who is young, who is in, look at this innocent face, who is young who is or, or older and you've made that decision. You've come to this beautiful moment where this woman is right now. You don't, how often is, is this glorious moment videotaped? You're not going to see this happen a lot. She hasn't started down that ugly path. For all of you people out there who are young or older and you've come to this moment and you think something has to be done, my hand is out to you. The good people in service to white well-being, their hands are out to you. We want what's best for you. You can be better than you are. Whatever you thought you were good at, you can be better than that. Where you have weaknesses, you can improve those weaknesses. It's all because of the meme pathogens that your teachers, your entertainment, your guidance counselors, the rest have sown into you. We can rescue you from that. You can be redeemed. And I call on everyone in service to white well-being to make it a personal mission in your life that when you come across people who are in this, this beautiful moment, the most heroic of all moments. I mean, right now, if this were if this were a movie, if this were a book, there would be a trumpets, there would be spotlights on her, the entire stage of that milieu behind her, the sun itself would go dark so that she could be lit with the beauty of that solitary beam for the glory of this moment. But because it is the real world, it can just pass by to the majority of people like that. They don't have eyes to see it. I call on everybody to stand up and do the right thing for our young and our old who hit this moment of such beauty and to get to them before all of these other endeavors that will make her into something that will ruin her life, especially the Aunt Nats. <laughs>